Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is series of plotting tutorials using Matplotlib in Python. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at bar plots. Now, bar plots are actually used for used for representing wind velocities in a weather map or in a meteorological meteorological maps or meteorological diagrams. And uh, sometimes it's also used in oceanography, wherein if they want to see uh, the uh, velocities of the currents or what underground water surfaces that present in the oceans they will also use this so the idea here is to represent the velocity of the wind and the direction of the wind what you do is you just draw a line and on the t on the end of the line on the towards the leftmost end of the line you drop you draw perpendicular lines representing the magnitude for instance if for instance over here the bar which i'm actually pointing uh, pointing to is the cursor it's actually it's not exactly horizontal it's like the velocity is not exactly horizontal rather it's slightly tilted to the top slightly tilted to the top and uh, the magnitude is actually parted by this one line over here which is perpendicular to this bar likewise in all the other plots over here all of the winds uh, all of the barbs over here the more number of lines they have the more is the magnitude and they also they give a correspondence with the colors uh, sometimes the lines lines is more than sufficient but sometimes they give it with colors too to make it more uh, readable for the user so we are going to plot uh, a similar kind of a bar plot in this tutorial and i'm going to tell you all how you can actually do this so if you're following along with my tutorial on uh, stream plot and quiver plot i'm using the same example of the vanderpool oscillator you can follow any example for that matter this is uh, this is going to be an illustration so here i'm just having this vanderpool oscillator function which actually calculates the velocities or the flows of the vanderpool oscillator equations okay equations and then I define a domain whose half length is eight units, eight units in the x and y direction, and I define n to be 101 points uh, lying along x or y direction, and I set a parameter mu to be 0.5, which is actually the point parameter for the Van der Poel oscillator, and I define x1 and x2 linearly spaced between uh, the length. Uh, linearly spaced between minus l and plus l so there are going to be 101 points between minus 8 and plus 8 uh, in this configuration same like same goes for x1 and x2 and uh, from these two variables i'm cre i'm creating a mesh field where i'll be getting a gridded data for, for uh, where each and every point has an x and y coordinate and then using these x and y coordinates i calculate the velocities calculate the velocities of the flows using the van der Poel oscillator function and finally i calculate the velo i mean i calculate the resultant velocity using this hypotenuse function that is available in um, numpy okay now uh, before we go on with the na before we go on with the actual uh, the slice intervals and skips slice intervals and skips what do we actually go i think we don't need this one over here before we go about with the slice intervals over here and the skip option let's actually just put a barb to draw bar uh, barbs plot what you do is just a plt dot barbs and then you pass in the x x one x coordinate y coordinate and the x velocity and the y velocity that is actually more than sufficient so what i do is uh, let me just uh, comment out this line comment out this line and just uh, run this one over here this will take some time but if you notice this plot is messy since the number of barbs that you have over here are too much in too much in number that's why it's all over it that's all they're all overriding on each other hence you get this really messy plot by default the barb colors are black by default the barbs are in black in color to make this a little more simpler to look at what i'm going to do is i'm just going to comment out this line and then I'm going to activate this line over here where I need to use a skip, param uh, skip parameter. Now I, when I put slice to be equals to four, and when I use the skip option over here, I'm just skipping uh, every. I'm just skipping four points uh, for between any two points. I mean, I'm just skipping four points. Uh, do every every four points so if i get if i plot one point i'm going to skip the next four points and then i'm going to plot the other point and then skip another four points thereby reducing the number of points to be plot so if the slice interval is reasonably high you get the barbs turn out to be better if the if the slice intervals are too long too high then the bar, the plot turns out to be a little bad so here what i'm doing is i'm just passing i'm just using a skip bar argument to pass x1 x2 u and v and also passing the velocity argument thereby we get some colors over colors over here so when i do when i do that let's have a look at this plot 
and there we go now we have a now we have a bar plot over here wherever it is actually zero it's actually in, it's it's in wherever it's actually a uh, dot round over here here it means the velocities are to velocities are minimal very small and wherever you have a small dash over here it means the velocities are slightly higher and wherever you have a bigger dash over here it means the velocities are larger and then you and then this one clearly this has more velocity than this I mean the magnitude of the velocity is more so that's why you have two darts over here and then two lines and then two and a half lines and three lines and so on and so forth okay I'll talk to you about the I'll talk to you all about this uh, increments in once in increments now so first thing you have to specify is as I mentioned the x1 and x2 and then you specify the velocities with uh, velocities and then you specify the velocity magnitudes if you want to get a, a color map or something color map and then you have an option called as uh, keyword argument called as pivot this will tell you where, where you want this will tell us to where the bulbs has to turn around you can either put it to the tip so that it will tip uh, turn at the tip of the bar or you can actually put at the put mid so that they turn at the middle of the bar you, you can do that and uh, here there will oh there's no mid over here I think there's tail <coughs> no there's no tail I think there should be another option so let me put this to tip as it is okay they're working anyway and now you can actually set your color map of your choice so if you don't have a color map let's say let me going to uh, let me comment this out let me com uh, comment this out and instead of a color map if you put color equals uh, such a green um, what am I typing here <laughs> instead of uh, instead of a color map if you just type a color all the bars will be of the same color same color you, that way you can change the colors but uh, in these kind of cases if our colors are okay it's actually better to go with a color map so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable this color map option enable this color map option so you can set any colors of your choice and then the most important argument over here is this bar underscore increment you see when I run this uh, so when I run this plot over here when I bar bar over here I specify a small I specify you can specify uh, what should be the critical velocity I mean what should be the limiting velocity for which the bar should have a small dash over here and what should be the velocity for which it should have a full line over here full line over here like that so that that is actually decided by the bar underscore increments keyword argument so this actually takes in uh, it's actually a dictionary that takes uh, takes in three uh, three values first is the half value second is the full value and third is the flag value so if you are here in this configuration if your wind velocities are less than 10 in magnitude they'll be given they'll be given a zero so in this plot over here let me keep it and let me keep it next to each next to it wherever there are zero so wherever it's actually full round over here it means that the velocities are less than 10 so wherever you have a dash over here here the velocities are at least 10 in 10 in, uh, values are at least 10 the whereas I mean the half dash over here the velocities are at least 10 okay at least 10 um, at the, it can be le but less than strictly less than 20 but wherever you have a full dash over here it clearly indicates that the velocity is 20 or at least uh, 20 to 20, 20 to 20, 22 the other half increment is 10 so it's at least between 20 to 20, uh, 30 so where if you have a dash if you have a big dash like this and there's an, a full dash and a, and a half dash like this it implies that the velocity is 30 here it's two full dashes so it's 40 here it's two full dashes and a half dash so it's 50 and then you and then you go uh, and then you go on and go on and on and then you go on like that and then there's another option called as a flag that will indicate uh, for what velocity that you should have a full uh, colored triangle inside or a flag in it for instance if I put this to 50 and uh, let me close this figure suppose if I put this flag to be 50 and let me zoom this screen up you can clearly see here now this is 40 wherever the velocity reach, uh, reaches a 50 value instead of having a dashes it will become a it will have a flag in it a triangle flag in a triangle flag in it and if there are velocity more than the flag then the increments will just proceed further the incremental usage will proceed further so for instance over here let me zoom this part of the graph zoom this part of the graph this one is a clear 50 and over here 
this one this uh, orange one over here this is clearly a six clearly a 70 because yeah this triangle represents 50 and this line represents a full this is a full line so it represents a 7 20 so it's the velocity is at least 70 meter per second or something like that so let me go home and uh, that and that's about it like you have a little more few more options in the barb arguments um, in the barbs arg uh, keyword arg you have a few more keyword arguments over here so those are like a little bit of additions that you can actually put in these are the most most major ones that you have to keep in mind and then if you want to have a color bar which we have a color map over here and if you want to have a color bar let's say use the barbs option that we put over here and then put plt.color bar and inside it just put barbs and uh, run run this you will get a color bar along with along with your plot that will that way you have a that way you have an idea what these colors actually mean mostly the lines itself would be sufficient but here if you have these colors <coughs> it'll be it'll be uh, it'll make a little more sense well that be with that being said that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video uh, till then take care